We've talked about creating your own support team in several of the modules before this one. So finally, the details. Some people call these care circles, other, others call them support teams. There are many different names that you could call this, but it really is just a group of family and friends and neighbors who help out when someone is sick at home or recovering. You may even choose a name specific to your group, like Harry's Happy Home Care Team. Membership and tasks in such a group. Sometimes you'll need only one or two people to help. And sometimes in longer care, longer term situations, you may need a lot more to divide a longer list of tasks. If your loved one is coming home after his hip surgery, for example, you probably don't need a dozen people doing many things. A few is enough to divide the work as a person will be up and about doing many things for themselves fairly quickly. In more complex or chronic conditions, you may need a bigger team to divide the tasks. If someone is in bed or chair most of the day, they will need help with almost everything. You don't want only a few people doing everything for a very long time. A core concept of a support circle or team is that confidentiality is critical, especially in smaller communities and neighborhoods. Whatever happens, whatever you hear uh, within a support team or whatever happens in a support team must remain within the team and the leader of the team will decide what is to be shared with others outside of that circle. Record keeping, just as we discussed in the previous unit on uh, questions to ask and answers to record, record keeping is critical. It helps you keep track of who on the team is doing what and when so everyone everything gets done and the home is not too busy. A communication logbook for day-to-day -day information, for example, is one of the core documents that you might want to keep handy. All of these records will include who you talk to, contact information for follow-up conversations, either by telephone, emails, or other formats, what you talked about, where you were for the conversation, whether it was at home, their office, at the bedside, when you talked to them, date and time, and why it was important to have the conversation, and how you resolved whatever the issue was. When making an appointment, you don't need much information, just contact information, so that uh, the basic uh, information is shared with the team. The communication day-to-day -day book allows people to read what's happened in the previous day or two, and to add to any uh, information for the people who follow. So if, for example, if the person has a medical appointment, what were the uh, conclusions drawn? If um, they've had some difficulty eating, what was tried, what worked and what didn't work. So the next uh, person can um, try something similar or different. It's important just to keep continuity between people who are part of the team helping someone at home. One of the core members of the team is the person we call the asker. The primary family caregiver should not be the team coordinator, nor should they be the one asking others for help. If you are asking neighbors for help with mowing the lawn or shoveling the snow, walking the dog and doing some basic groceries, it is best that someone else on the team other than the primary caregiver go door to door and ask neighbors for help or by telephoning them. In this way, if the person is the least bit uncomfortable in saying no, uh, to the spouse, for example, of someone who is ill on the street, they are more likely to be uh, comfortable in saying no to you personally because you are not the, the core um, caregiver. As well, the asker is less known to the neighbors and other friends, and so people can be more honest about what is needed and what is not needed. Uh, neighbors may want to do a whole lot of things, and when, when all that is really needed is some help um, with some very basic errands. Asking needs to be specific, more likely a pos to get a more likely repos positive reply. Rather than, can you help Bob, ask some specific questions like, can you mow Bob's lawn every few weeks? Can you make a supper once a month for Bob's family? Can you babysit once a month? Where situations uh, where care will be required for over a year or more, you can go beyond family, friends, and neighbors, and also ask colleagues, members of a faith community, members of a bowling club, etc., to join in. As long as the commitment is not too great, most people are keen to help. For example, a bowling buddy might come once a month just for a chat or to catch up on a football game together. Keep in mind that many people uh, go on vacations, um, and so you won't have the same core group of people every week that you would like. That's why scheduling. 
become so important. To prevent four visitors showing up one day and no one the next, it's important to have a schedule. A member of the team uh, reading to a loved one shouldn't coincide with a cousin showing up for a chat, a chat at the same time. So schedule not only members of the team and what they will do for the person, but also visitors um, and what to do when unexpected people come by. In situations where someone needs 24-7 care, a, ske a schedule is especially important. You might break up the day into four to six hour time periods and one person on overnights from 9 p.m., for example, to 7 a.m. Often the overnight person brings their own linen or sleeping bag to prevent a lot of extra laundry. They bring their clothes for the next day so they can shower and go straight to work or school. Schedules have to be flexible, of course, as people get sick themselves, they get new commitments, go on vacation, etc. Plan uh, to have backups um, of people who are nearby so it's easy for them to, to, uh, to slide themselves into the schedule when necessary. For longer term care situations, you may hold a monthly meeting to make sure everyone is okay with how things are going. They can suggest changes, share stories and laughs, and of course food. They may also share concerns um, that something isn't being done by others uh, when they arrive, um, so that laundry may not be done, dishes may have been undone, those types of things. You want to uh, um, resolve any conflicts early on as a team begins. People will, of course, uh, turn over, especially in longer term situations. Uh, the longer the care provided, the more people are likely to come and go. Some will, some will help for a relatively short time, and others will help in spurts between their other commitments and vacations. Some need to leave because they're just not right for the task, and that's not uh, to their detriment or, or uh, judgment. Just some people aren't suited to be part of a support circle like this. They may have difficulty providing physical, emotional, spiritual, and information supports. Different people will be comfortable doing different things, and some people will figure out that they're not very comfortable doing any of it. It's okay not to continue. It's also okay, okay to ask someone to stop or to do a different task. This is a constantly evolving process for everyone. Uh, the more open the communication, the less the conflicts will um, continue. We started the program by saying that uh, every day people have an opportunity to make a significant difference in the lives of others. Care teams are a particular opportunity to do that uh, every day. While you are helping, the person you are caring for is your priority. Your own needs, your own um, concerns, your own um, illnesses must be secondary to the person you are supporting. Uh, otherwise, this won't work. Care really is a mutual gift, um, and you can certainly uh, ask for advice from someone you're caring for in certain circumstances, but th they are the priority. Support teams are also called circles of care, uh, and they may have their own particular name. Membership is up to the uh, person receiving care, of course, and the immediate caregivers, uh, and confidentiality is very, very important. Record, communica record keeping and a communication logs are critical to make sure that everyone knows what's going on and when it's happening. And the person who's doing the asking of others for help or for errands um, needs to be someone other than the immediate caregiver. The immediate caregiver should, their most important role is that of caregiver, of spouse, son, daughter, uh, grandchild, uh, whomever. The asker is someone outside of that immediate circle who can ask without feeling badly if someone says no to a request. You're asking for specific things and you're scheduling visitors, helpers, appointments, and of course the team members. Meetings of the support team for longer term care uh, helps to make sure that everyone knows what's going on, that laughter and shared stories are, are possible, and, and there's a bonding between the members of the team knowing that they're doing something that is making a significant difference in not just the person who's receiving support, but their immediate caregivers as well. Expect turnover, it's normal, it, and it's okay for people to say they don't want to do something, and it's okay to ask them to stop themselves. And we go back to the original source, nurturing relationships and the mutual gifts that the care uh, process provides. 
Our last module will look at what next, where to take the information that you've gotten so far and to move forward on your own caregiving journey.